Hey everybody. Today we're going to show you some more abilities, special weapon abilities. And we're going to show you the musket, the fire staff, the life staff, and the hatchets. The first thing we're going to start off with is the musket. Now the first ability is the trap. You set a trap on the floor and then whatever steps in it gets stuck there for five seconds while you attack it. Let's see if we can trap this wolf. Put down my trap and goes around. Yeah, okay. Goes around the trap. Oh, there it is. It's caught. And I can shoot and miss. I can miss it. That's what I can do. Well, I, well if I would not have missed, it would have been a pretty awesome trick there. Now, the next special ability is the Hunter's Vision. And you might recognize this from a different game when you see it. It's pretty neat. It's very handy when you are defending a fortress because it enables you to see through stuff like trees and rocks and smoke. You might recognize it from playing Call of Duty, maybe? See how cool that is? So there's the wolf, and there's the wolf behind the tree, and there's a behind the rock and the tree. So that's very handy when somebody shoots a smoke bomb at you. You can see through the smoke. Now this next item is kind of funny. It's a sticky bomb. People like to trap people in the trap and then put sticky bombs on them. Let's see if I can put a bomb on this sheep. It has to be in that little circle. There's the bomb stuck to it. And you'll see the ship explode. <laughs> and that's the sticky bomb. It's pretty funny if you can land it. Next up, uh, well, let me switch my, my abilities here. You can just remap them to the keys. I'm going to show you the... Power shot is the first one. It does a lot of damage. It took off half of its life points just with that one shot. Next, I'll show you the shooter stance. This increases your accuracy. Can you see the wolf in the distance? It's kind of far away. So you get three shots with this. But you can increase that up to five shots by putting points into the things directly beneath it. There's a shooter stance. If you follow the line downward, put points in there, you get up to five shots and they become more powerful. Next up is my favorite musket ability. Uh-oh, here's a wolf. Oh, we better run. We can't get away. It's chasing us. What are we going to do? Oh my gosh, I can't get away. Oh. I know. It's not gonna stop till it kills me. Should I shoot it? Or... <laughs> Should I just play dead? So that is play dead. You basically play dead and then whatever's chasing you leaves you alone because they think you're dead. Next up is the Fire Staff, a favorite of mages. Oh, getting attacked by all these wolves here. Maybe I should use the Pillar of Fire on them. That was the Pillar of Fire. Everything caught in that circle gets fire damage, as you can see. Next is the Siege of Fire. And I'm going to cast it on that wolf over there. Oh. Yeah, I hit him. The other guy hit him too, though. Shoot another one. <laughs> and that's how that one works. I, I think there's a glitch here because the cooldown period isn't over, but I can still continue casting. And it tells me I'm not flagged for PvP. So you have to flag for PvP if you want to attack other people. Next step is the meteor storm, I think. 
Is that what it's called? Media shower. See that unsuspecting wolf over there? Watch what's going to happen to it. This is very good for fighting in war. You have to put the circle thing around it, just like the other fire spells. Too far away for this one. It's not very good for fighting wolves, as you can see it just ran right out of it. But it is good when you're in a war and you want to attack a big group of people. Next up is the flamethrower. This is kind of cool if you can keep your opponent inside the flame. When you're fighting people, they don't like it and they try to get out of it. <laughs> but it's it's easier against mobs. You can see that's a flamethrower. Can't really see, but it burned him up. You can see it from the side. Every time I move the camera, the uh, the view changes though. So it's kind of hard to see. Next tip is the speed of light. And that leaves a burning trail of fire behind you. Anything that goes into that trail gets damaged. That's a little hard to land because you can't really run through people. And the next up, and the last thing for the fire staff is the incinerator. Anything inside that circle would have been burned. Next is the life staff. Now the life staff is a slightly overpowered because of its teleportation abilities. This is the healing thing. And it will heal anything that is in this circle. So you use it to heal your friends. If you're all piled up in one of the control points at the fortress or by the door at the fortress, you would heal them all in there. Also good for attacking the fortress is this. The, the holy shield will block any kind of projectiles like arrows. So that's a good thing to throw around your, your group and you can protect them. Last, last kind of a long time. Next up for the healing shield is Divine Embrace. You can heal people that are farther away. They don't have to be standing right next to you. There aren't any people for me to heal here. So I heal the bush. Everybody likes a nice healthy bush. Now when I was making this video, I realized I made a mistake earlier. The thing that leaves the flaming trail behind you is not the speed of light. It's called the burnout. The speed of light is coming up in a minute and it's completely different. What you're gonna see now is the siphon. Now, if you attach the siphon to your friend, it will heal them. If you attach it to an enemy, it will kill them. Sucking the life out of that wolf right now. And it drained about half of its life. Now this is the speed of light, which allows you to dart forward 20 meters. You can increase that to you can increase that to 30 meters. And I think you can even shorten the cooldown period. I don't remember, but it's heavily overused in the game, and it's a must-have if you want to fast travel all over the place. It's currently a little bit overpowered. I don't know how they're going to fix that. Whoa! Now this next ability is the Smite. The Smite will let you damage somebody from a distance. I'm going to Smite that wolf. I smote it has been smited <laughs> and now it's gone 
The last thing we're going to see today is the hatchet. First step is Berserk. Now Berserk is slightly overpowered as well because it locks you in place and it's hard to get out of it. The developers say that you can get out of it, but they didn't tell us how. So I could have just wailed on that wolf as much as I wanted to and it would not have been able to get away. Next is the Sprint Attack. As soon as the cooldown period ends, I'll show you the Sprint Attack. Basically, you run at something, and you attack it. There you go. The third one is the Purge. You're gonna see the Purge in a second. The Purge removes all debuffs and provides 5 seconds of immunity. Can't really see that one. That's not a visual one. Up next are three throws. The aim throw, the quick throw, and the power throw. This is the aim throw, which is not working because of a glitch. You've seen it in the previews. It throws the axe. Mine is not throwing because of a glitch. That's the quick throw. It's like a sideways throw. And somewhere in there was the power throw. And that's the last of the hatchet abilities. So it's rumored that they will be adding new weapons to the game. Maybe the axe or the pike, the spear. And that they are expanding the map. If you enjoyed this episode and found it informative, why not subscribe? And I'll see you in the next episode.